Now that we know about the parent functions, let's take a look at how we can use transformations to get all of the other graphs of the uh, family of functions. So when we're talking about transformation, it is any change to the parent function. In green here, I've got graphed the parent function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. But let's take a look at g of x, which is absolute value of x minus 2. Now, how we graph when we don't know how to graph is by plotting a bunch of points. And I've got a table mostly filled in uh, for f of x. But let's see what those same points do uh, when we're talking about g of x. For instance, the point 0, 0 on f of x is the vertex. But now when we plug it into g of x, we're going to take the absolute value of 0, which is 0, and then subtract 2. So now we're at negative 2, which is right here. For 1, 1 on f of x, absolute value of 1 is 1. But now, after taking the absolute value, we subtract 2. And that will put us at negative 1, which is right here. For negative 1, 1, the absolute value is 1. Now when we subtract 2, we're at negative 1. Uh, when x is 2, absolute value of 2 is 2. But now when we subtract 2, we're at 0 for both of these. So when x is 2, we've shifted down 2 units. And negative 2, we shifted down 2 units. Now when we start connecting all of our points, we see that we get the exact same shape. It's just that everything is shifted down 2 units. This is called a translation, and that's when we just take the exact same graph we have and shift it. So whenever we're adding k outside of the parent function, that's going to shift it up or down k units. But what if we subtract 2 inside of the function? What that means is that we're going to have to subtract 2 before we take the absolute value. So when x is 0, 0, 0 on the parent function is the vertex. But when x is 0, we have to subtract 2 first, which will put us at negative 2. Then we take the absolute value to get 2. So now when x coordinate is 0, the y coordinate is 2. When uh, what was 1, 1 before, the absolute value of 1 is 1. Now we have to subtract 2 before we take the absolute value, and we'll get 1 again. Oh, that's awesome. Same spot. For negative 1, uh, when x is negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. But now for g of x, we have to subtract 2 first, then take the absolute value. So now x is negative 1, and the y-coordinate is 3. What used to be 2, 2, right here. Absolute value of 2 was 2. Now we have to subtract 2 first, then take the absolute value. So that puts us at 0. What was negative 2, absolute value was 2, right here. Now we subtract 2 first, then take the absolute value. And now we're up at 2, 4. And it doesn't look like we have the same shape at all. But what happens if we continue picking numbers? Like 3. We have to subtract 2 first. That will give us 1. And the absolute value of 1 is 1. So 3, 1 is right here. And if x is 4, subtract 2 first. Then take the absolute value. And we get 2, 4, 2. Now we do start to see that familiar shape that we should get with all absolute value functions, that v. It's just that now our vertex has moved a little bit. So again, we have a shifting of that absolute value function, but notice it didn't get shifted up and down. Now it got shifted to the side. And more importantly, notice where it got shifted to. If we take a look at that vertex, that got shifted from 0 over to positive 2. Look at our function. It said x minus 2. This is very important that even though we see the minus 2 inside, our vertex got shifted to the positive 2. That's because the vertex happens when the absolute value 
is zero, all right? When what is inside that absolute value is zero. The only thing that's gonna make the inside equal to zero is when x is positive two. So what we see with that translation is depending on where we add or subtract that number is gonna tell us how we uh, shift our graph. When we add outside, that thing's going to move up or down k units. And when we're adding h units on the inside of that parent function, that's gonna move our graph side to side, but it'll be the opposite of h units. All right, so if you think about our most important point on absolute value function or on the quadratic function is going to be our vertex. It used to be at zero, zero. Now it's going to get shifted left or right, negative h units. So the x coordinate would be negative h. And it's going to get shifted up and down, k units. So from zero, zero to negative h, k. So let's find the vertices of a couple more functions. Take a look at where we're adding those numbers at. Our vertex is going to be the opposite of what's on the inside, negative 1. That's going to be our x-coordinate. And then it moves up or down 2 units. Well, since that's plus 2, it will get shifted to positive 2. In g of x, the x-coordinate is the opposite of the inside and the same as what's on the outside for the y-coordinate. I mean, we could even work backwards. What if I have a graph? Can we come up with the equation of this graph? Well, sure we can. First of all, this function is f of x. It's got that distinctive v shape to it, so it's got to be an absolute value function. Okay? But check out where that vertex is at. The ordered pair for that vertex is at negative 4, 1, which means on the inside of our absolute value, we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to add 4, because negative 4 plus 4 would make 0. And this vertex got shifted up 1 unit, so on the outside of the function, we're going to do the same thing as that y-coordinate, add 1. And this will be our function for this graph. Let's take a look at another kind of transformation. Uh, we'll do this with a parabola. A quadratic function has that distinct U shape we call the parabola. Uh, for f of x equals x squared. If we take every x value and squared, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is also 1, 2 and negative 2 squared are both 4. Now with g, we want to uh, find negative x squared. Now be careful. A lot of you uh, do this wrong when we put it on a test, but when I have negative x squared or negative anything squared, we have to take the opposite of x squared. We have to do that power first. So, as we go through our list, we're going to start with the x value of 0. We're going to square it first, which is 0, then take the opposite. Well, the opposite is 0, 0. So, that's going to stay right in the same spot. For uh, x equal to 1, when we square it, we get 1. But now we have to take the opposite of that. So, when x is 1, now we're down at negative 1. Same thing here with x being negative 1. Squared it gave us 1, so the opposite is negative 1. In fact, with 2 and 2, 2 and negative 2, when we square them, we get 4. But now we're going to take the opposite of those 4s, which will make them both negative. So 2, negative 4, and negative 2, negative 4. So all those values are the same, but when we take the opposite of them, they all became negative. So we'll have the exact same shape. It'll just be down here. So what this does is take the, the normal parent graph and flip it over the x-axis. We call that a reflection, anytime that we flip the graph over the x-axis. So when we have y equals negative f of x plus h plus k, remember that h and k give us our vertex. Our vertex is going to be at negative h, positive k. So the opposite of h and the same as k. But this negative means uh, that our graph is going to open down. So what I mean by that is, of course, a parabola normally opens up. The negative is going to make it open down. So let's see if we can graph one of these without having to set up a table. 
just by thinking through the way that the, the function is set up. If I look at f of x equals x plus 2 squared minus 3, first of all, we can identify our vertex using these two numbers. Remember, the x-coordinate is the opposite of what's on the inside, so that will be negative 2. And the same as what's on the outside, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 is right here. When we look out in front, we don't see any negatives, any opposites. So that means this is going to open up. We also know that because we have x, uh, this quantity being squared, it's going to be a parabola. So with a parabola, over 1, up 1, and over 2, up 4. And we get that U-shaped parabola. And there's a good graph. And if we have g of x is equal to negative absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4, our vertex is going to be the opposite of the inside. So the opposite of negative 1 is plus 1. And the same as what's outside, negative 4. Now when we look out in front, we have this negative sign. That means it's going to open down. So now it's time to graph. We go over, find our vertex at 1, negative 4, right here. And we're going to make that distinctive V shape because it's absolute value, but opening down this way and this way. The last kind of transformation is called a dilation, and that's a vertical stretching of the graph. Let's go back to using the parent graph of absolute value, a nice V shape. And what if we multiply by a constant outside of the absolute value? So we're going to take the absolute value first and then double it. When we look at our table, f of x in green, right, when x is 0, absolute value is 0, 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. Negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 and negative 2 are both 2. Right? Now, when we're trying to identify what g of x is at those same x coordinates, we're going to take the absolute value. So when x is 0, the absolute value is 0. But now we're going to double it, and it's at 0. When x is 1, absolute value is 1. And when we double that, we get 2. For negative 1, absolute value is 1. And we double that, and we get 2. For both 2 and negative 2, the absolute values are 2. When we double them, we get 4. So when we plot those points, 0, 0, our vertex is staying in the same spot. But when x is 1 or negative 1, now the y-coordinate is up to 2 here and here. And when those x-coordinates are positive or negative 2, their y-coordinates are now both 4. So we will still have that same V shape, it's just that we're going to end up with a much skinnier looking V. Notice that normally on a parent function for absolute value, the slope on this side is 1, and the slope over here is negative 1. But now, after we double it, the slope on this side is now 2, and over here it's negative two. So when it comes to a dilation, that vertical stretching, now we got like the, the most complicated R function can possibly look. Um, remember over here, we get our vertex being at the opposite of H, K. And then the number out front, if uh, A is negative, that's going to mean it opens down. Otherwise, it'll open up. And the value of A, that kind of gives us our slope on both sides of the absolute value. That's what's going to stretch it or compress it. So here we have f of x is negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3. So first, we're going to identify the vertex. Notice we're not adding anything inside. So that means the x-coordinate is going to be 0. And we take the same as what's on the outside at plus 3. So our vertex is going to be at 0, 3. Then we look at this number that's out in front. Because it's negative, it's going to open down. And because it's 2, that means our slopes are going to be plus or minus 2. So we have to make this V shape. Absolute value means it's got a V shape. 
it opens down with a slope of 2. So instead of going up 2 and over 1, we're going to go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and back 1. We'll do it again to get another set of points, down 2, over 1, from the other point, down 2 and back 1. Now we can grab our straight edge and go ahead and graph it. The left side comes from the vertex down this way, and on the right side will come from the vertex down this way. And there's a very good graph of our function f.